Serious what's a scary science fact that the public knows nothing about. 50% of insects have disappeared since 1970. Insect population is down 27% in the last 30 years. Declining between 1 and 4% each year depending on the genus. All onions all veggies and the allium family are toxic to dogs. Worst can scenario then can develop a ha. Autoimmune hemolytic anemia. Whereas the body destroys its own red blood cells. This disease is about 80% fatal. My dog caught it, we are not sure from where, but it was a primary disease not a result of a cancer. We think he was eating leeks out of the garden. Took a week in the hospital, two blood transfusions, and about 6 months of meds to get him back. He started at 45 pounds, and was down to 19 pounds at the worst part of it. Heart muscle cells don't reproduce much in adults roughly 1% per year. If you have an infarction or other stressor that kills those cells, then your heart won't be able to grow new cells to replace the dead ones. This is why patients with diseases like heart failure end up needing a heart transplant. Trying to get this process to happen is a major goal for many cardiac researchers. Edit thank you all for making this such an engaging and interesting discussion. I've been studying heart cells for 10 plus years now basic scientist. No clinical training, and it's so refreshing to read many diverse perspectives and on-point questions. Also why cocaine should be used very, very infrequently if at all as it's directly cardiotoxic. Edit dudes I'm not a doctor I can't give you medical advice. Edit just google drug cardiotoxicity people. Research the duck out of shit before you try it, and test shit with reagents for god's sake it's so easy and cheap. I was a heavy cocaine user for a while, and I still have weird dull pain in my heart at times that like likely goes all the way down my left arm briefly. I used to get these pains all the time and my left arm and fingers would get cold when I was using a lot of cocaine. I'm talking several grams by myself with lots of cigarettes and speed. Been clean for a while now. Life is much better. Edit just want to say this. I was a man who could not stop using cocaine. No matter how hard I tried, I didn't get clean overnight, and it was a difficult path to sobriety with several relapses along the way, but it was worth it. Every day I wake up, and I take a minute, to remember how grateful I'm to be sober. Any addict who is seeing this, there is hope and there is a life worth living free of drugs and alcohol. Feel free to contact me, if you are struggling. Edit to I'm going to see a cardiologist, now that y'all have webbed me. Best talk to a doc and get that checked out. If that is angina, carrying nitro tablets might be a good thing. 1 in 3 people will get cancer. It's pretty ducked. It's 2 in 5 in the US and slightly higher in the EU. Especially Germany, where it is almost 1 in 2. Germany German text link US link. Why so high in Germany? Anthrax spores can remain viable for decades in the soil or animal products such as dried or processed hides and wool. I heard of issues coming up with those tough mudder type obstacle courses. Company rents out a field. Digs up the mud. Mud is contaminated with agricultural rune off acophesis. And people get all kinds of infections and viruses. When doing an autopsy they don't put the organs back where they belong. They are all stored in the belly, all together in a bag like giblets in poultry. Late to the party. But here goes. There are weaponized strains of anthrax which can remain viable and dangerous for 40 plus years after release. In 1942, the UK tested an anthrax bomb on Grunet Island. Killing a flock of sheep in days some died in hours. Examination showed that the spores could remain active for decades and decontamination proved impossible at the time. The project was scrapped. Fast forward to 1981, an eco-terrorist group smuggled a sample off of the island and threatened the UK government with releasing it if the island wasn't decontaminated. The spores were still active and deadly. It took four years to plan and execute the cleanup using 280 tons of formaldehyde in a seawater solution and removing 7 hectares worth of soil to a depth of 3 feet about 58,000 tons of topsoil, where the concentration was too high for the juice to do the job. The island was confirmed clean in 1990, four years after cleanup began. Scientists don't know exactly how acetaminophen works to relieve pain and reduce fever. They have an idea but nothing for sure. 
but yet it's the most commonly used pain reliever in the world. This is actually true of a large number of medications. Trauma can cause structural changes to your brain. PTSD is literally an injury. Trained dogs can smell when someone with PTSD is triggered. The amygdala tells the body to start producing stress hormones and dogs are able to smell the sweating that causes. Great book on PTSD. If anyone is interested the body keeps the score by Van der Koch. Approximately 60% in some reports of the world's population have the parasite Toxoplasma gondii in their brain. For a long time it's through to have been a benign presence. But recent statistical research shows that it may have an impact on things like levels of anger and rates of accidents and suicide. When Gondi eyes on rats it changes their behavior so that they find the smell of cat urine sexually appealing. So they find cats and get eaten. In the gut of the cat the parasite can reproduce. Its literal aim is to kill you so it can end up in a cat. It's known to affect your hormones causing severe depression. Increased anger and far riskier and more damaging behavior increased susceptibility to substance abuse and seeing risky and dangerous behavior is less serious than it is sometimes fun. If you have ever lived with cats or spent a long time with cats, you almost definitely carry it. I only recently learned that when you get sunburned, the burn isn't because of skin cell damage. The of radiation damages the DNA. Then the skin cells decide to commit suicide and fall off so that the damaged DNA doesn't produce cancer. I'll never be mad at my skin peeling again. Researchers have found viruses in the Arctic permafrost that have been frozen for thousands of years. One of these viruses, Pithovirus, was dormant for 30,000 years until the researchers revived it and it infected the amoebas that were placed in the tank with it. Which of course presents a scary scenario what happens when the ice melts away and viruses are released that haven't been in contact with humans for 10,000 plus years. The United States has lost and never recovered at least 6 nuclear devices. Thankfully nuclear weapons require a lot of precision engineering to detonate. So after this many years of them lying out in the element they are unlikely to be able to detonate without major repairs. That does still leave the possibility someone finds it and uses the material in a dirty bomb. But at least there aren't really concerns over a spontaneous nuclear explosion. Primes are terrifying. They are basically zombies at a protein level. They are misshapen in such a way that causes them to misshape other proteins. Normal methods of disinfection don't work. This makes researching them a very tricky matter, as while most cases involve eating infected meat, mishandling prion samples is all it takes. Tricky part is, there is no treatment either. Once they get in you, they are 100% fatal. It has been a while since I've studied them, so this picture may be incomplete, but I do know they are always fatal. If your dog swims in a lake, after receiving a spot on flea treatment it absolutely decimates the invertebrate population. A large dog swimming in 8 Olympic swimming pools worth of water soon after treatment will leach enough neurotoxin to kill 50% of the lake's invertebrate population within 48 hours. I say after I mean relatively soon after, within say a day, to have an effect quite this devastating. The leaching does reduce over the month. But it's still there, and the effect of multiple dogs still allows for a terrible build-up of chemicals. This has blown my mind. What are the active chemicals that cause this? Imidacloprid, permethrin and methoprene. DuPont knowingly infected over 90% of the American population with PFOAs, a harmful plastic that has a half-life of 20 years. Lawsuit is still ongoing but no one seems to be bothered. Edit this link link will talk about the different trials and settlements that DuPont and companies alike have faced. Also talks about what a PFOA and its dangerous effects. I heard that it's actually worldwide. John Oliver did a segment and he spoke of a study where a team went to pretty much every continent and everyone has a bit of foes in their blood because of it. This is actually a major scandal in Belgium right now. An American company called 3Mail apparently knowingly dumped large amounts of PFOS similar to PFOAs in Belgian waterways which ended up in the drinking water. Our government knew of that, but kept silent about it for the right price. Until someone exposed everything to the public. 
Of course everyone is now playing that the values were just below dangerous, so it's not a big deal game. To distract from the straight up crimes they committed. Antimicrobial resistance. The bacteria are getting resistant to the drugs much faster than the rate at which we are producing new drugs. Soon we will reach a scenario when antibiotics cannot treat simple yet lethal infections. I had a treatment resistant infection in both of my ears that spread to my skull. They were able to get it under control, but I almost lost my hearing and I have permanent damage in my bone now. It was super scary. The doctor was talking about possibly having to remove parts of my skull, just to get rid of it. The demon core was a spherical 6.2 kg 14 pounds subcritical mass of plutonium 89 mm 3.5 and in diameter. Manufactured during World War II by the United States nuclear weapon development effort. The Manhattan Project. As a fissile core for an early atomic bomb. It was involved in two criticality accidents. On August 21st, 1945 and May 21st, 1946 each of which killed a person. Brain aneurysms can be completely unpredictable and can happen at any time in your life, no matter how healthy you are. A kid who I went to high school with at the age of 16 just did not wake up one morning and his cause of death was a brain aneurysm. Worked a high school volleyball game as a medic not too long ago. One of the girls made a great jump, then smashed the ball. Think she scored too. But I'm not familiar with the rules. She then comes walking over to me and said she felt a pop in the back of her head. I gave her a full workup. Didn't find anything. But said it was probably best to take her for a checkup. Just in case. We chatted on the ride about her college plans and her game. I found out 4 days later she had been declared brain dead. The pop was an aneurysm. This call really got under my skin. At least you drove her to the hospital. Your professional judgement was right. Before the vaccine. The number of people who have had HPV infection. And have had at least one sexual partner. Was 85% in females and 91% of males. By far the most common stay, worth elaborating there are a ton of strains, and most of them are relatively harmless. Only a couple produce notable symptoms or issues, so most people never have any clue they have it. Inside the permafrost around the world there is stored about twice the amount of CO2 we currently have in our atmosphere. That's why permafrost must stop melting. Edit thanks for all the nice serious comments. Edit 2 thanks for the awards I appreciate it. Don't forget about methane, which is also dangerous, and there's a ton of it frozen up. I may have heard this anecdotally, but I sent the methane cycle significantly shorter than the carbon cycle. As in 10 years the methane is out of our atmosphere, while the carbon cycle is much longer. Microplastics revealed in the placentas of unborn babies link. Also our fruits and veggies are soaking up microplastics through their roots link. Brain damage and behavioral disorders in fish, induced by plastic nanoparticles delivered through the food chain link. Mouse study shows microplastics infiltrate blood-brain barrier link. Immunology a dive into plastic toxicity and our immune system link. Wolf Coalition. Org Project Research Immunology. Of course like every chemical we want to pass the blood-brain barrier doesn't. But literal GD plastic does. An asteroid passed the Earth in September that was about 40, 90 mil in diameter. And we didn't see it until a day later because it traveled towards us from the direction of the sun day it passed us at half the distance from the Earth to the moon. Just to add a bit of context, you can fit two Jupiters between Earth and the moon. And for a bit more context half the distance of the moon is about 30 times Earth diameter so if we compare it to shooting. It's like you were aiming for a watermelon and hit something 3 meters next to it. Space is very large. Student shoots at watermelon with arrow. Hits the parked car on the other side of the highway. Archery instructor unimpressed. NASA observers lose their ducking minds. Update by popular demand. The WHO research paper link on requirements for safe drinking water for maldehyde in drinking water. A lot of people in rural towns with an elevated cemetery around this happens in Ireland a lot. There is formaldehyde leaking into the drinking water. But it won't kill you. But the thought of drinking dead people juice is probably equally bad. Sorry not sorry. Update I have a PDF link to the scientific research paper from WHO concerning the requirements for safe drinking water. 
and it covers the entire formaldehyde in drinking water issue. If anyone is interested, I read it, and I can confirm it's true, but not detrimental to your health. Even long term. Totally not me thinking the water was tasting weird recently I happen to live in Ireland. Not sure if you're around the Dublin Wicklow area, but a boiling water notice was just lifted like 3 days ago. I did not know about this, and have prob been drinking dodgy water for over a week now. We might be sitting on a ticking time bomb of mad cow disease prion disease that was in tainted beef in the 90s. The most closely related prion disease, Kuru has an average incubation period of several decades like 30 years or so. So there's a theory that the people who died from mad cow disease in the 90s are actually only a very small fraction of the people who contracted it technically called VCJD, if it's in humans. As they were just the people who the disease happened to progress very fast in. There may be hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people who are going to start losing their sanity and dying as their brains rot from the inside in the next several years. There's also a pretty good chance this isn't true though and nothing will happen. A lot of scientists believe the incubation period is 10 years or less. As we haven't really seen growing numbers of VCJD deaths yet. Since we have no way of finding out the test for VCJD is just looking at someone's brain to see if it's all messed up all we can really do is just wait and see if something happens try to prevent further spread. The longer nothing happens, the more probable it is that there's no issue. But that's why blood donors from Europe the UK were banned outright. If a bunch of people do have it and donated blood things will be bad to say the least. Although they'll already be bad when the UK life expectancy drops a decade. So many people will struggle with infertility. It's not talked about or really discussed in middle school or high school and health class. When it happens, it's such a shock to the families and they are completely unprepared. The numbers are going up as well. Statistical 1, 4 pregnancies end in miscarriage, which is pretty high but again, miscarriage isn't discussed. The universe's Higgs field might be metastable link of false vacuum and decay at any moment, destroying everything. Nutrition deficiencies such as iron, vitamin C have many symptoms that were uncovered in an experiment in residential school. They would have a class of indigenous children that would never get iron from foods or any intake. Another class would get the iron supplements, then compare for results. There are alternative ways some proteins can form tertiary structures. These different structures make the protein unable to function. These alternate protein structures are infectious and incurable as they are so stable. If you get them in your blood they will slowly convert your own proteins when making contact. They are called prions. It gets worse. All of the diseases they cause are horrific progressive nightmares that aren't just incurable, but untreatable. And they are all 100% fatal. How easy it is to inadvertently seriously damage yourself with an unfortunate combination of ordinary supermarket products. Also, prions. Duck prions. I'm glad to see prions so high up here. That's one nasty bugger. And still incurable. If my college biology professor wasn't completely misinformed, most humans have some form of parasite living inside them. Some variety of worm, etc. There are just creepy crawlers in our insides, and we might never notice them. The one that came closest to giving me nightmares was hookworms. Although the thought that you could have heartworms kind of messed with me, too. Evidently, they are not just for dogs. Hookworms are one that most people in developed areas don't have. And there's evidence that's why autoimmune disease and allergies are so common in those areas. Like the hookworms produce a mild immune suppressant. And the immune system attacks them. Without those interactions the body attacks harmless environmental contaminants allergies or itself autoimmune for example Crohn's disease. 